Back in October of 2022, I did a video featuring the Creality CR Falcon 10 watt laser. And at the end of that video, I made an offhanded comment about it being a good machine, but not quite a click of press killer. Well, Creality asked me to hold their beer. Okay, so this is the new Falcon 2 22 watt laser. You can see the original CR Falcon 10 watt in the background there. And right off the bat, you can see that this is essentially a whole new machine. Uh, this is the designed completely differently. The aluminum extrusions, the, the frame is more beefed up. Um, and of course, next to it is the one you've seen in numerous videos. This is the uh, original CR Falcon 10 watt. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna refer to this one as the Falcon 1 and this as the Falcon 2. Here are the laser modules. Uh, obviously this is twice as powerful, so it's twice as big, I guess. Um, and it's one solid piece. One thing I did have an issue with occasionally on the original version was that the shielding here at the bottom was kind of a magnetic stick-on affair. If the leather wasn't laying completely flat or if it wasn't taped down, uh, this occasionally got knocked off. And when it did happen, it would happen at, typically at the end of a run when the laser was going back home on the frame. You can see that this is not going to be an issue on this new laser. You have keys to lock out unauthorized use if you want to. You also have an emergency stop button. You could also do this on the Falcon 1 as well by just toggling off the power switch. So personally for me, one of the nicer differences between the two are the cable management. Uh, the Falcon 1's cable management was a little bit lacking. Again, this isn't a big deal, but you know, it is a difference. The air assist was also a completely separate unit that required its own plug. On the Falcon 2, all this stuff is a little bit more integrated. You can see that the, the air hose and the power to the laser is actually integrated more into the frame. It just keeps it a little bit more tidy. This feels more like the way a 3D printer would be set up. Additionally, uh, the air assist on the Falcon 2 is integrated. It's plugged into the, the frame, and so all you have to do is turn on one power switch and both the laser and the air come on at the same time. Additionally, the air assist on the Falcon 2 has an adjustment wheel, uh, which is lacking on the Falcon 1. Okay, so on the control side here, this is pretty much identical to the Falcon 1. Uh, you can actually hook this up to a computer and run it off that way. I don't do that. I run everything off SD cards. And here uh, you're provided with a stack of adapters to do that with. Just like the Falcon 1, you are given a basic honeycomb bed to do cutting operations on. When the laser is going through material, it's got to go somewhere. You can also buy larger versions of these, which I've done. Here are your little focusing gadgets, as I call them, and they're pretty much look identical. While we're on that subject, focusing is done exactly the same as the Falcon 1. And again, you're given a sample pack of a variety of different materials to play around with. A little piece of metal there, some uh, almost like foam material, some paper, some wood. And most importantly, you're given a sheet of stickers. Okay, operationally, it's exactly the same as the Falcon 1. We're going to power it on, which turns on both the laser and the air assist on this machine. And then we are going to hit the frame button. The laser is going to go home to calibrate, and then it's going to do its little dance around the outer perimeter of your workpiece.
I'll go ahead and point out, obviously, whenever you're working with lasers, you're going to need to have proper safety precautions in place. Uh, you, first and foremost, are going to need to do this in a ventilated area. Uh, you can see a lot of the smoke being generated. And also have your eye protection. I'm going to assume that a lot of people watching this are really wanting to know what's the actual difference between these two machines. Uh, what does that extra 12 watts get you? So I have set up a little side-by-side -side comparison. I have a G-code file for a piece that is particularly difficult for me to cut by hand. This piece is actually one of the reasons I originally wanted a laser for it. It's a holster weld. And for those of you who have watched my channel before, you've seen me cut this exact same piece on my 10 watt laser there on the right. All the settings in Lightburn are the exact same between these two. Lightburn is the app that you use to create the files that these machines run on. Your two main parameters are the speed of the laser, how fast it moves, and the power output. So, and that's a percentage. I've got these set, if I remember correctly, at I believe 4,000 millimeters per minute and a power level of 100. And I set this for three passes, which means that's going to trace three times. You can really physically see the difference between these two lasers. The 22 watt is generating a lot of heat, a lot of smoke. And again, this is why you need to do this in a ventilated area. I'm in my garage with the garage door open and I've got two fans running, hence the noise. This is off the 10 watt laser, and upon first inspection it looked like it performed fairly well. It looks like it cut almost all the way through. Maybe needed one more pass. However, when I cut it out, it looked like it maybe actually went about halfway through. On the 10 watt, I would say this probably needs about five or six passes. And the Falcon 2's 22 watt looked like it went right through. There's maybe a little bit of an attachment at the corners. That seems to happen no matter what. Okay, let's scale it back a little bit, and instead of cutting, let's just do some etching between the two. It was about here during filming that I realized I had made an error. I had made this nice monogram with kind of an Art Nouveau border around it, and both lasers were spending a little too much time on that. And I realized that I had accidentally set this, instead of one pass, I had set it for like four or five passes. Um, and as you can see, the Falcon 2 blew right through it. However, the part that I was most interested in was the etching. And as you can see, the 10 watt, it looks good. But the 22 watt, it as you would expect, put about double the depth on it. To get the same effect on the 10 watt laser, you would just need to slow it down or make more passes.
Okay, so let's try cutting another little piece that's kind of a pain. Uh, toe plugs. Those little pieces of leather at the bottom of my holsters. Okay, short and sweet. Uh, let's take a look at it. And it looks like it almost went all the way through. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my light burn settings and I'll slow down the laser just a little bit. You'll find yourself doing this a lot until you get all your settings dialed in. By the way, that little light there, you can just make it out. That is the light that you're looking at whenever you're framing out your perimeters. And you'll be able to see here that just slowing the laser down just a little bit made that work a lot better. While we're on the subject, let's try that exact same G-code file on the 10 watt. And that actually worked fairly well. The 10 watt, you would just need probably one more pass on that. Oh, uh, you can also use the laser to cut stitching holes if you want to do that. The level of detail that you can get with either of these lasers is amazing. Um, which one would I choose? Well, I would go with the 22 watt, of course. But if you've been looking at the 10 watt or you've already purchased it, it's not like you're losing any functionality. The 10 watt will do everything the 22 watt will do. You'll just have to adjust your settings in Lightburn. You'll have to slow down the laser a little bit, or you'll have to make a couple more passes. You really can't go wrong with either. Please make sure to like and subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and I will see you again on the next video.